Hello and welcome to this overview of OpenFX Color Space Transform with inside of DaVinci Resolve. Color Space Transform allows you to move one gamma and gamma over to another. The reason you might want to do that is because it standardizes your color grading and color correction post process. It gives you a predictable look to consistently achieve in order to go to one of your delivery standards, be that Rec 709, P3 or HDR. Uh, for example, this footage was shot uh, on the Sony FS5 to the 7Q Plus via the FS RAW stream over to S-Log2. Um, I'm going to process this normally. Let me just process this normally with the LUT that Convergent Design supply you with. So if I go to Convergent Design, uh, this was 5500 Kelvin, roughly two stops overexposed. Boom, this is the image that we looked at on set and it looked okay. Um, if I go over to this one, this other copy of it, I'm now going to process this using Color Space Transform. So, sorry, to get to Color Space Transform, you want to navigate up to your OpenFX tab, scroll down to Color Space Transform, and now you can work within one node. Uh, so, within this one node, I'm going to tell DaVinci Resolve uh, what color gamut I use. So, this was Sony S gamut. I'm going to say what log curve I use, which was Sony S log 2. Then I'm going to tell it where I want to go to. So I want to go to the ARRI Alexa color space and ARRI Log C. So now technically we're inside of ARRI Log C, uh, which means I can now use ARRI Alexa LUTs. Uh, but as you can see, the exposure is not the same as this. Now the reason for that is that this LUT has exposure compensation built in. For those that don't know, um, Sony cameras uh, require exposure compensation in post. The reason they do that is Sony is trying to be incredibly efficient with its codec by not burning in the exposure shift when changing ISO values via the MLUT. They allow what originally was black to be recorded slightly higher up the chain and then everything else that's above that also gets recorded higher up the chain. What this does is it puts more code values into that, into that image. So instead of instead of the codec looking at this image and going, oh, okay, so this is black, I will now give this X amount of code values, it sees it as gray, it sees it as some version of gray, and it gives it more code values. And the reason for this is, if you look at a, if you look at a corrected image, the way, it, the way a codec works is that it will give more code values to brighter parts of the image. And our subjects, you know, their, their clothing, their hair, even their skin tones, they they don't they'll never get as high as 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 the exposure value of a cloud, so we'll never we'll never get the same amount of code values. Um, so Sony's approach really is to leave the overexposure burned into the codec in order to allow more code values to get into that data, and for better or worse, that's their approach. And you know it does work. Uh, it just means there's a slight extra step in post. Now. With this footage, we had an exposure compensated LUT. So this LUT brings the image over to Rec 709. Um, it mimics the LC709A LUT from Sony, and then it pulls the exposure down by two stops. This footage hasn't done that because it's the ARRI Alexa LUT, and the ARRI Alexa LUT is expecting correctly exposed footage, as in your exposure matches the EI you picked, and then the codec has been encoded at that EI which is different from Sony. So on the FS5, for example, this image was encoded at 2000 ISO, but my exposure was set to 500 ISO, and I found exposure via a light meter. Um, whereas with the Aria mirror, you could set the Aria mirror to 500 ISO, expose at that level, the, level, the, the footage would be encoded at 500 ISO, and then you apply one, light, one LUT like what we did here. So this does require a post-exposure adjustment which you can do with the offset con control here. But if you wanted to be a little bit more mathematical in order to not hand over this responsibility to the editor and colorist, you can use a piece of software called LUTCALC from Ben Turley. Um, with this piece of software, it's much like Color Space Transform. We're going to create what I call a pass-through LUT, an exposure compensated pass-through LUT. So all you need to do is you need to, you need to tell the um, piece of software uh, what your gamma was, which is SLOG2, you need to say what the gamut, watch was, uh, gamut was, which is Sony S gamut, and then make sure that the output um, settings match your input. 
uh, when you do this, this, this means there'll be no contrast adjustment and no change to the color gamma. The, da the data will essentially just pass through. Um, but this now gives you the opportunity to change the exposure. So if I select minus two stops, or not equal, sorry, <laughs> minus two stops, and I press enter, you can see the curve has been pulled down and the middle gray value has been moved. Um, you can see that I've already already got so, uh, S log two minus two selected. That's because I've done this overview about thirty times. Um, and from here, I'm going to select a grading LUT. I'm not going to clip any values, uh, and I'm going to click generate LUT. And as you can see from my previous attempts at this overview, we already have the LUT created. Now, I'll quickly show you where the LUT needs to go to in, in case you haven't done this process thirty times before you get to it. So you want to go to library. Application Support, uh, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve. Then you want to navigate to your LUT folder. And then inside your LUT folder, you can just drop the LUT in there. Or like I did, you can create a new folder, which I did, uh, called CST Demo. And then inside this folder, I've now dropped our LUT. I'm going to click Cancel because there's no reason to overwrite that LUT. Once you've done that, uh, you then navigate to the cog icon on DaVinci then move to color management, and then you want to click this button here, update lists. And what that does, if I open up the LUT folder, is it lets DaVinci Resolve know that you've added something to its database without having to restart DaVinci Resolve. Let me click cancel. Now, once you've done that, you need to create two nodes. So now you'll have a post-LUT, a pre-LUT grade, oh, sorry, a pre-LUT adjustment, and then you've got your output adjustment. Um, and in here is where you change the exposure via that LUT. So if I go down to CST demo, S-log2 minus 2. And that has now corrected the exposure. Now, on paper, that's, that is exactly what I went for. My exposure was two stops overexposed. The native was 2000 ISO. I selected 500 ISO. I monitored the minus 2 LUT. But you'll see that these two images are not exactly the same. And now it's really up to you to subjectively decide what's better or worse. And personally, I think the color space transform looks far better. You could argue that this image is more saturated. Uh, and if I increase this saturation of this image by, say, 50%, which is 25 points, I still think it looks better. I think now with the extra saturation, I could potentially, I could potentially move the whole image maybe slightly cooler and really get that pop uh, in the image and it's you know it's ready to go and, and I think I mean this can be improved but it really for me this is so quick and simple and it's and it's a snap now that's just working with s log 2 um, and you know you'll have people that will doubt the process and it's probably not spot on because it probably can't be um, but this is the area mirror this is from a short film I shot about two years ago now. It's the awesome Johnny Vivash and Sam South. And this film is um, Run, Run As Fast As You Can, directed by Katie Smith, who's um, yeah, uh, gladly let me use this footage to demo. Um, so if I apply the ARRI, ARRI Log C to a Mira 709 LUT, this is the image you're presented with. So this is ARRI Color Science from the ARRI Mira, very popular camera. Uh, you would potentially think that there's a lot of color pollution here uh, because the image is, you know, because there's a lot of foliage, it's green, um, digital cameras see a lot of green, but the skin tones look neutral. They look good. You know, there's no pollution inside the white pinstripe here or the blue, and these skin tones look great. And if we're going to treat this as the gold standard, then this is the way to, this is the way to go. This is nothing more than my exposure that was found on set, which was 800 ISO, um, it is the LUT that is provided by DaVinci Resolve for ARRI footage, which would obviously come from ARRI. Um, and that's the result you get. That's now where you go. That, that This is where you would grade from. This is your, your point of reference. However, this is from the Sony FS5. Now, the Sony FS5 um, launched... When did it, I can't remember when it launched, but I... What was it? It was like January... No. It was December 2015. I bought the camera January 2016. Uh, so December, January 15. December, January. It was December 2015. I bought the camera January 2016. We shot this film around May, June. 
of that year. So this is before, just before the the raw the raw upgrade had really come out. Um, so this was shot in S log three to match the Arri log C curve. Um, uh, S gamut three cine um, to make color grading easier, apparently. Um, but essentially, it's just to try and get it to match the Arri camera as much as possible. Now, as a humble colorist. Um, and I'm not a colorist, I'm a cinematographer and DP, I make my living doing that, I don't color grade, I don't edit, I am a humble color, I'm a moonlighter at best, um, but as a humble colorist, the LUT I would use to process S-Log3 footage is the Burt LUT, and S-Log3 uh, Arri Look Balanced is the LUT that I would use. Uh, now again, because of that, our previous uh, because we're on the FS5, uh, the, a Sony camera, the, the EI that I went for on set is not burned into the footage. Uh, and again, you can just pull the exposure down. Somewhere, say, there, maybe looks right. Uh, and you can bounce between these two images. And they look fairly, fairly cuttable, I would say. Um, but... I think a better way of doing this would be to apply a pass-through LUT. Now I've already created these before uh, and I don't need to show you the creation of one again because you've already seen it, but if I go down to my S-Log3 pass-through LUTs and then select 1600 ISO, that's the exposure I went for on the day. That's one stop overexposed. It gives you plenty of room in the highlights. And if you look at these two, you can see that they would cut well together. They really would, right? But let's have a look at this image via color space transform. So again, I'm going to create I'm going to create two nodes this time. Oh. Oh, I did that. Let's do that again. Dunk. Hmm, how weird. Anyway, let's leave it at there. So, I'm going to create two nodes. In node 1, which is technically node 2, I'm going to apply my color space transform. This is S log 3. Uh S gamut 3 dot cine, S log 3 log curve. Again, moving over to the Arri log C in Alexa color space. We're then going to apply the Arri Alexa log. Uh, let's, let's go to a mirror. Uh, Arri log C to a mirror 709 LUT. Uh, and then let's correct this exposure to the same value using the pass through LUT. So we've got S log 3. Pass through 1600 ISO. There we go. So this is the this is these two images side by side. But what you really want to look at is these, don't you? And there's a vast difference for me. There's more contrast. I mean, there's more contrast, and you could change that. I mean, you could easily change that if that bothered you. Uh, but for me, it's the skin tones. In this image, you can kind of feel that green pollution, and then you'd be fooled into thinking it's coming from the forest, and that that's natural, and that's something that's got to be graded out. And then you might look at the Amira footage and say, "Well, that's why you know you know why you use an Amira, why you use an Arri camera. You know, it's got a bit, it's got superior color filter array, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't see that pollution. But really, it's the way it's processed. You know, this this image via the Burt which is fantastic." Um, looks like it's got color pollution. It looks like there's a bit of green there. And you can see that disappear when you use color space transform. And things look, I don't know, I, I would say they look far closer and far nicer. Uh, and I think it's the way to go. I mean, you could, you could say that maybe the color space transform and the mixture of the 3D LUT exposure compensation doesn't exactly match and you maybe you need to push it back up, but still. I think these images would play very well uh, in post, even from an amateur perspective. Um, but the fantastic um, talent over at WASH, um, which is a color grading facility in Hackney, they did a fantastic job on the film. And there's no wonder why. The images are very close. And color, things like Color Space Transform can, can help amateurs like myself move image data into a very predictable space and get very predictable results. And it doesn't matter if you're using a 36,000 pound Arri Amira or a 5,000 pound Sony FS5 on firmware one point something or whatever it was. Um, you can get away with very good results. Um, so yeah, so that was my overview of, of color space transform. 
Um, I have tried this on lots of footage. I, I personally own a Red Dragon and a Sony FS5 uh, with the 7Q Plus. I've tried it on S-Log3, S-Log2, uh, S-Log2 from FS Raw, FS Raw DNG processed over to S-Log2, uh, red, wide gam uh, red wide RGB uh, footage, Blackmagic cinema camera footage, Ultra HD footage from the Blackmagic production camera. Um, what else have I tried it on? Uh, S-Log2 from an A7S2. Um, even old linear footage from an AF100. Um, and you generally, it generally gives you a better result. Um, the, what, what I have learned is that the, mo the, the more you give this process, the wider the color gamut, the more code values you give this process, the more you can do. This, I don't think this constitutes as heavy grading, but there is a fair amount of mathematical processes, uh, processes happening in the background that pull your image around. And... You know, a 50 megabit codec, you can kind of see there's a bit of softness here. I mean, these are both HD cameras, right? And the expo yeah, the, the um, focus is not off. And they're actually using the same lens, um, which is the Sigma 18-35 to uh, PL lens from GL Optics. Um, you can actually see that if you give if you give a, uh, if you give this process more data to play with, you've got more options in post. And the great thing about Color Space Transform is that it's going to give colorists a single space to work in. So it's, it's going to allow them. It's going to allow them to have an aces approach when they don't want to work in aces. It's going to allow them to, if if on a daily basis they're grading um, Alexa footage, um, and then they get red camera footage thrown in there, Sony F55, Venice, Panasonic, Eva, whatever being thrown at them, they can move things over to a predictable space and then see where the image is wrong, instead of having to look at an entire a, a completely bone dry image and move that over to uh, ARRI manually. They can just go through this process, they can trust this process, and then quite clearly see where the image doesn't match up, where the, where the um, saturation and exposure needs to be moved around. Uh, and then they can go to one of three delivery spaces, just like what we're aiming for in the first place. We're always aiming for Rec. 709, uh, P3, and HDR. Uh, with 99% of us always going for Rec. 709 these days, with you know social media, YouTube, etc., etc. Um, so if we can now work in an individual way with our multi-camera shoots, where we can we can use the Amira to its best advantage, we can use Sony cameras to their best advantage, where they want to overexpose, um, and then know that the colorist is not going to be screwed up by this. As long as they've got the metadata, as long as they know what they're working with, they can bring things over to a predictable place. They can use awesome tools like LUTCALC and DaVinci Resolve to bring the images to a neutral position for color correction, and then from that moment on, they can then start to the color grade, and they can do what they need to do, and they can be more creative, and, they can, and it can free them up. Anyway, sorry to waffle on for so long. I hope that's helped some people, and if it has, please let me know. Um, I've got a website going live, hopefully sometime in May. I'm going to start doing more of these tutorials. I'm going to blog a little bit more, and I'm going to cover more than just color grading and technical issues. We're going to start talking about blocking. We're going to talk about the psychology of cinematography. You know, we have a lot of people that talk about simple things like managing the line, the 180 degree rule, etc., etc. But they only ever talk about working with two actors. The second you put in a third actor, you get extra lines, and you don't get two, you get three. Um, so that's the sort of thing we're going to start talking about. Hopefully, going to be able to shoot some footage to demonstrate that in this type of fashion, where I get to talk to you and demonstrate uh, the footage, uh, you know, play it back and what have you, uh, live via a screen capture. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think of that, um, and if any of that sounds any good. And I hope to see you on the next tutorial. All the best. Goodbye.